Yeah. What most people don't realize is that most masculine women are masculine by mandate, not by choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're masculine because we have been made to be. Yeah. We're masculine because if I don't go qualify for this mortgage, if I don't put these kids in the best schools, if I don't really make sure that my neighborhood is safe for me and my children to walk down, it won't be safe. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Berean Babs. I'm your host, Vali Chikuni. We begin the feminism on display over here. So now introducing these uh, ladies, okay? And you, I don't know you guys you can see in their background there, it says, listen to black women, okay? We want to listen to truth. It doesn't matter. You're black, white, green, purple, whatever. We want to listen to truth. We just don't want to listen just because of your skin color. Be that as it may, let's listen in to what they're saying. Here we go. What would you have us do as these men in skirts who don't want to be men in skirts? We want to be women in femininity. Mm -hmm. yeah. What most people don't realize is that most masculine women are masculine by mandate, not by choice. Welcome to Listen to Black Women. I'm L'Oreal, and we're here with Elle Barner. I'm a feminine woman, and traditionally, I want to play the feminine role. Ebony K. Williams. I show up in this world as Ebony K. Williams, and no man can just hop on that. And the beautiful Melissa Ford. I want to preface all my answers with the fact that I am a progressive traditionalist. And let me tell y'all something. You are in for a treat of an episode, because you are <laughs> sitting amongst women that are always going to tell it like it is, whether they get backlash or not. Basically, um, when you get to a certain age, your outlook on people does change a bit. You do you do start looking in other areas for love than mm. what you would have when you were younger, right? Oh, so absolutely. do you feel like with being more successful that happened as well? Because the dating pool seems to get smaller the more successful we are. The dating pool is a waiting pool, okay? <laughs> I don't have the answer. I don't, other than to blame everything on social media. And then the gender war is on blogs every single day mm. is just yeah. contributing to the divisiveness between us. You know, it's, it's, it's when you go into the comments, it's such a sad state of affairs. I just leave, I'm just like, okay, I'm done. I need a But then cocktail. at what point though, to, to that uh, issue, Melissa, can we engage, right? Because I do think, at least from my experience, anytime I pose a question or a proposition or a theory, it, it's positioned as a gender war. Mm -hmm. I know, I, I don't believe in war, I believe in peace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what I also believe is peace is not the same as silence. Mm -hmm. So you can't, give me a scenario that I find unacceptable and expects me, expects me to just comply with it and call it peace. Mm -hmm. That's not peace, no. that's, that's uh, man manipulation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that I can't do, but I, I think we've got to talk about it because the reality is I think Melissa and I specifically represent a generational gap too, right? Mm -hmm. Where we come from a generation being women in our 40s where gender roles were more concrete, okay, where right. men were, had certain expectations and let's be clear, women had certain expectations. Mm -hmm. And if we really want to name the thing that's so controversial, Melissa and I represent the first generation of women who generally and by and large represent economic power. That this is the first time in history yeah. in which women have, have found themselves in equal footing with men. When <laughs> Guys, yes. So these are the ladies, okay? The one in white, her name is Ebony K. Williams. So you can, I mean, every sentence that's coming out of their mouth, okay, is they're just screaming, feminism, 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 okay? Beautiful women, successful, they have money, good jobs, you name it, beautiful women, they have everything. What they're fighting against now is like, where is the money at, okay? And they are more, okay, you have all the power. You have everything, right? This is the problem that feminism is going to bring. Feminism destroys women. Because it, quote unquote, like women feel like they are empowered and they don't need a man. But then when you look around, like, wait a minute. No, we do, I actually do need a man. But you need attitude adjustment. Men don't like um, women who are feminist, okay? That's why this is what you see. This is what you say. And to them, because they've got a big bank account, then they feel like, like, okay, men should come along. Like, no, a man will marry a poor woman who, is, who has a good attitude as opposed to a rich woman who has money and everything. They just cannot see it. In their mind, we have made it, right? We are representing this generation where women are on par with men. Men and women are different. If your goal as a woman is to be on par with a man, to be the same as a man, you are going to find trouble, but nothing else. Because you're going against the design that God has designed. God has not designed women to be like men and vice versa. Anytime we try to do that, 
there is always going to be trouble. And you can hear from what these women are saying, okay? So, guys, <laughs> you have, listen in, listen in, listen in. We continue. When it comes to finances and, and professionally speaking, this yeah. is a, there's, there's nothing to compare, of compare it, to. it to. There's nothing. It didn't exist. It didn't um, exist. And so yeah. everybody still has that notion that everybody's, you know, vision of a perfect life is the white picket fence, getting married with the kids. And I was like, no, that was all that was available. I'm sure mm -hmm. that there was women in the 20s that were like, I don't want these kids and I don't want him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but what, what was the option to a woman back then? Yeah, right? Right. But now a woman could say to herself, mm, that's not my ideal, you know, like life goals. I, I can really, take care of I, want, I want to take mm -hmm. care of myself. I want to be rich auntie. I want to travel. <laughs> I want to see the world. And I don't really want to be burdened with, you know, the responsibilities that somebody would say, hey, I love this thing. Yeah. You know, we're all, it's, it's just, it's your own, you know, personal sense of, of identity and what mm -hmm. makes sense to you. And this is the first time in, you know, in ever where yeah. women have the wide berth to really investigate what their wants, what their needs as an individual mm. and not a monolith yeah. Yeah. is. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And also have choice, right? Mm -hmm. I think there are women that have intrinsic value in being a wife mm -hmm. and in being a mother. And I want to make that, that was the point of the MRS degree. That's what I was going to ask. Yes, that was yeah. the point. Is I'm, I'm not the threshold for most women that I know. Mm -hmm. um, I am an anomaly. I am an outlier, okay? Mm -hmm. I am someone who has been married earlier in my life. I got divorced very quickly. And I realized for me, being married and being a wife in and of itself has no intrinsic value. Um, so that means I am not willing, nor am I incentivized to give a lot in order to have those capacities. Right. But I think that's not common. I think most women, especially black women, do desire nuclear family. I think they Agreed. do desire it. Mm -hmm. Now here's where it gets complicated to your point, Melissa. What, they're not so desirous of it that they are willing to do it under any and all circumstances mm -hmm. okay. as the generation previous to them had right. to do. Mm -hmm. So now what you've got is a generation of black women that say, listen, I would love to not be the breadwinner. I would love to take my money that I make as a nurse, my money that I make as a school. Okay, guys. This one in here, the one in a white dress, that's Ebony K. Williams. She is a liar. Why is she a liar? She just told us that according to her, she does not care for a man. She does not care for a family. Guess what she has done? She is pregnant. She's pregnant with a baby girl due August. And where did that baby come from? She went to a, uh, to, to a bank, okay? Go get a donation from the bank. Now she's pregnant. She doesn't know who the father is except on paper, okay? Just a profile. That's it. So if you told us here that you do not care for a family, then why are you pregnant? Why are you out there trying to get a man's seed? If you, if you don't want a family, if you don't want anything of those things, you see what I'm saying? Feminism doesn't work. <laughs> These women want to pretend that they don't need a man, that they've made it, they have arrived, they got it all together. They are lying. And the, the fact that she's pregnant, we, we have all our answers. And then they have the audacity to be bring, blaming the social media. What does, I mean, get rid of your feminism. Okay, repent. Start working with the Lord. Stop blaming social media. For your, uh, for your feminism, okay? And I already did a video about her, okay? So if you guys haven't watched it, avail yourself on that. You can see. And then she actually had the audacity to say, uh, quoting the scripture on her Instagram page, okay? She says, uh, and he will give you the desires of your heart, Psalm 37, 4. She did not quote, quote the entire scripture. The scripture says, you know, uh, delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your life. This lady just put it, he will give you the desires of your life. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. We read our Bibles out here. Stop lying. Stop lying. Might even make as an attorney and put it in the kitty. Put it towards something. Instead, though, what they're being forced to do, y'all, many of them, because we all know these women, they're being forced to put the family on their back. They're being forced to pay all the bills, do most of the child care, and turn a blind eye to you out here in these streets. Yeah. And because they, that, Hello now. Okay. <laughs> and a generation ago, women had to ride with it because they did not have the kitty. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a stream of independent income that allowed them the exit strategy that yeah. is available to black women today. I literally had to explain to the guys that up until 1976, women could not have their own bank accounts without literally. a man's signature. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't her husband, it was her father. Yes. Ooh, that, is, that is massive. You know, when you think about that, and you know, contextually mm -hmm. as to what she was permitted, what she was permitted to do, permitted. choices that just were not available to her, mm -hmm. which is why 
women are so, you know, they're holding on to their sense of independence, like hard earned independence now. You know, the abilities to make these choices, to go to school, invest all their time into a profession, a career, and understand that nuclear family doesn't work out. This is just as good. And that's something that a lot of, I'm going to say men don't really actually want to But is it just hear. as good, though? And I think that's where it gets complicated. I think for a lot of women that find themselves at, at our age, Melissa, they're asking that existential question. So they're saying, you know, at least some of my friends, some of my sorority sisters, they're like, okay, let's, let's look at this. I do have my, my house, my mm -hmm. mortgage. Mm -hmm. I do make, literally, most of them, over $250,000 a year without batting an eye. Not to say it was easy, but it, they're doing it mm -hmm. every day. Um, and they, they got their Louis, they got their Louboutins, they got their Birkins, and now they're saying, what else? Mm -hmm. What else? And I think that's a fair proposition, too. So the mm -hmm. MRS degree conversation was really about that uh, sector of women right. that feel like I chose what my mother and grandmother told me to because, to your point, Melissa, they didn't have a choice. And I think that's why so many of us were raised this particular way mm -hmm. that says, I want you to have the choices I didn't have. Yep. And it's amazing because we do. And thank Another lie? So these women, I mean, how shallow can you be as educated as they are? It's all about money. It's all about materialism. Okay. So this, all this from the garden, right? It's this cry of wanting to be independent. You want to be independent from who? Because look at them, right? You're already single. You're by yourself. You make all this money. You are, you are already independent. Okay. So what are you crying about? But in their mind, they feel like those things is what defines them, right? Having money does not define a woman. But they assume that's what defines them. So they're getting their value of being a woman because of their achievements, okay? Having a college degree, having uh, a whatever, a corner office does not define who, what a woman is. Absolutely not. So they got it backwards. So as a result, they're looking at the society. They're looking at their, oh, this is a first time. So in their mind, in the history, this is when these women have arrived, right? Because, you know, their grandmothers, our grandmothers didn't have these opportunities. Guys, okay? If your grandmother didn't have the opportunities, then how come you exist? Huh? How come you exist? So at some point, your grandmother had your grandfather, okay? They had children and here you are. So we think we are the ones who have progressed. But no, we are not progressing. We are regressing. And we think that we are progressing, okay? Back then, people knew. Women, they knew their domain is at home. You are to manage your home. Men were out there grinding, making things happen, taking care of their families, even with the little that they have. Now, we, people are so educated. They have so much money. But so many people, so lonely. Why? We have abandoned our values. And these are the prices that we are paying. Okay? You have a negative birth rate coming up in, in Germany, or uh, in Japan, China. U.S. is in that category as well. Why? Because women are busy in their workforce. Now they have everything. They decide, no, now let me have babies. They can't have babies anymore. And here she is. After she told us all these things. Okay? So, then why are you pregnant? Huh? Ebony K. Williams. So, yeah, man. Now, these are lies. This is what's wrong with the society. I'm telling you guys. You know, it's always, they want to be independent. Okay? They want to blame the society. They want to blame men for their desire of wanting to be dependent. Eve was already doing that in the Garden of Eden, right? She wanted to be independent. And then she decided to blame the, the snake. Oh, it was the snake that deceived me, right? And they ran away and they were fearing. They were fearing God. But before, they are walking around in the cool of the day with the Lord. Now, all of a sudden, you are scared. You are running away. So, Nothing new under the sun, okay? Nothing new under the sun. But we continue. Are there less women being battered in their homes today than mm -hmm. there were a generation ago, mm -hmm. right? So let's be clear, the advances are important. And also now we're being asked to make a different choice. Mm -hmm. So if we want it all, we're paying on the front end of the back end, is yes. what my experience shows me. Decide for ourselves, am I a masculine, masculine woman? There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Some women want to be in control and they can have a man that is, you know, taking notes or whatever, you know. That's not, <laughs> that's, that's no, holding them. We're not going to let her get away with it. Yes, that is wrong, absolutely wrong, 100% wrong. There's no point, no need for a woman to be masculine. Like, why are you trying to be masculine? Why are you trying to take the traits of a man? Just be a woman the way God designed you to be. Why are you trying to be like a man? 
again and they and she's just saying well there's nothing wrong with a woman to be masculine <laughs> purse okay you know what i'm yeah. saying hold my bag pull up i, I need you to that. go here do that yeah. like whatever and there's nothing wrong with that maybe that's the house husband the beta man the beta man no, but if it's a if i'm the masculine you're the feminine and that's what i i want mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that right. but if i want to be a feminine woman right you need to be in control there's so many men that are, just say that they want a feminine woman they want a submissive woman they mm -hmm. want a delicate woman you know and in order to you know have that sense of control i was just like i don't know one woman you know well maybe a few but like the majority of women <laughs> that i know they would let you lead if they didn't think you were leading them to hell. Yeah. Like, where are we going? I've been led My to hell safety. before. Where are we <laughs> going? If you don't have a plan, yeah. and I have a plan, that's a problem. Well, so it that's is. what's sad is because that's really what I was asking Dr. Ayan Lavanzani, the original question, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The original question went like this, y'all, because she had, sis, uh, had done The Breakfast Club, and what she said was, I thought, provocative, and I was interested in it in a good faith way. She said that we have a lot of young ladies out here that are men in skirts. Wow. Right? That's what she said. She said that our men in skirts because they look pretty on the outside and they got all of this, but deep down they are men. They are leading with their masculinity. And I thought, I will say, I thought I felt seen in that moment mm -hmm. because I said, you know, I look as feminine as possible because I am trying to um, overcompensate. I'll, I'll own it. I'll be vulnerable. I am trying to visually overcompensate for what I know is a default masculine posture that I walk through the world with every day. Mm. Of course I do. You, you see my taxes. Uh, so, um, <laughs> no, I mean, but for real, you know, I got, I got a payroll, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so when you are leading in this way, when you are providing not just for yourself, but for those around you, your whole community, how, how are you not masculine yeah. in your energy, right? Yeah. But to Melissa's point, most of the women I know, especially the black women, we would love if we didn't have to. Ooh. What people don't what realize. Do you so more lies that these women are saying. Everything that they're saying, notice, everything is attached to what? To a bank account. So the other lady says like, no, it's fine with her if she has a man who she's just like a houseman sending him around. He's carrying her bag. He's doing all these things. Guys, <laughs> what is that? What type of man would want that? Huh? What type of man would want that? So the fact that they want that type of a man which means they're going to be the man in, in, in their whatever scenario they're creating here. And then why are you having issues? Why are you complaining? And then Ebon is telling us like, okay, you know, yes, I might look f feminine, you know, but inwardly I'm not. That's not what we remember. Like, you know, uh, 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 beauty, right? You know, uh, be you, it's the inner being, right? It's what's inside, not what's outside. God looks what's inside, not what's outside, okay? Man looks what's outside. So we already know if you walk up in here, okay, you pretend you're looking like a woman, but you're acting like a man, how long before a man finds that out? You see? So why are you behaving right away? Why can't you be a female inside as well as outside, right? Why can't you go for, you know, to code their ways, right? Why don't you have that femininity energy inside out why do you have to have it only outside and not inside what's making you hold on to why you why don't you hold on to your femininity inside i don't get it i don't understand okay just because you have all money that doesn't mean that you're a man there's nothing wrong being successful there's nothing wrong having money okay like you can have money you can be successful but you can still operate within your calling as a woman the way god has designed you to be you don't have to be masculine because you have a fat bank account. I, to me, I'm, I'm very troubled by how they, they come to this conclusion, right? In fact, even the proverb said one woman, she was a successful woman, okay? She had her own money. She, was, she had business, okay? She knew how to take care of business, but she managed her home. She's out there, you know, having business, buying a land. She's waking. She's um, giving orders to her house, house girls. And the scripture exhorts her. So you can be that. You don't have to lose your, your, uh, your femininity. But this is what we're getting, okay? Yeah. What most people don't realize is that most masculine women are masculine by mandate, not by choice. Yeah. We're masculine because we have been made to be. Mm 
Yeah. We're masculine because if I don't go qualify for this mortgage, if I don't put these kids in the best schools, if I don't really make sure that my neighborhood is safe for me and my children to walk down, it won't be safe. Mm -hmm. And my question to Dr. Von Zott was, Ayanla, what would you have us do as these men in skirts who don't want to be men in skirts, we want to be women in femininity, mm -hmm. but we don't, we're afraid. Let's just name yeah. it. There's a fear of most black women today, y'all, that the man that we desire to keep us safe and provided for does not exist. Yeah. Either he is unwilling or unable. And I'm gonna go back to unwilling. Yeah. Willing. Either unwilling or unable to do so. And what you have is a generation of the first generation that is unwilling to go without. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna go without because I don't have to go without anymore. So if you're telling me that my only way to get it is to be a man, fuck it, I'll be a man. Mm -hmm. I see, I think that's crazy that we say that because we just had a whole conversation where we talked about the single mom having to step up, you mm -hmm. know? So how does that make you masculine when at the end of the day? So you see, the truth is just coming out of her mouth, okay? Because she said it herself, uh, the men are not willing or they are not able, okay? No, men are able and men are willing. <laughs> they are just not willing to entertain your feminism. That's what it is. That's all. That's what it is. It's nothing to do with your bank account. <laughs> it's nothing to do with your bank account. So right now, they're raging against men. They're blaming men. No, man. <laughs> that ain't true, sister. That is not true. <laughs> But if your home is suffering because of your job, then, you know, something's going to change. But these women, they have so much money that they can just stay home. The man is just, you know, man is just working for them. You see what I'm saying? So then why can't you get married, settle down and just be home? Because they have, they're already successful financially that they don't need to go to work. Okay. They can just stay home and they're good. But here they are. Of what you need to take care of. I don't well, the look reality at that is I don't think that I don't think that most single mothers wanted to be that. They Correct. did. Yeah. They did what they had That's to do. Ex exactly. We're all speaking from a from a place of survival. So, from yeah. survival. Yeah. From, yes. from our circumstances being hoisted upon us for and we're forced to adapt to them. Just because you can adapt to circumstances doesn't mean that they are pleasant circumstances. They could be the Correct. most toxic circumstances ever. Yeah. But you have to adapt in order to survive. And now you have progeny to look after. You have children yes. to look after. So you have no choice but to be both the masculine and the feminine in the house because the man right there. Right yeah. there. He's not there, but He's I just hate that the, the taking care of is always put towards masculine. Yeah. Because that's where I think things get No, confused. I didn't mean it in No, no, not, not specifically yeah. you. I mean just as a whole. Mm -hmm. When the woman steps up and takes care of things, now she's masculine. Right. Yeah. And it's like, well, we are take care, care of. Yeah. Take care I think of. there's the nurturing part of taking care of that women get to be. And then I think there is the provision, mm -hmm. the, the financial and the kind of safety mechanisms of providing that people put on men. I'll close with this, for me at least. Um, I do think a lot of understandable critique of some of my positions is that's all great and dandy, but once again, why is it back on black women? Yeah. Why always. is every note, theory, commentary point telling black women what to do or what not to do? Mm -hmm. And the only reason I will say it is this way, ladies, is because I am a black woman. If I were a black man, I would be giving all of this business to black men. Mm -hmm. But it cannot be a black woman. I have learned the hard way that can pour into black men around what black masculinity looks like. Sure. It requires a black man. So my hope and prayer as it relates to whether we want to call them gender wars, mm -hmm. whether we want to call it good faith conversations among black men and women to see what does this relationship look like for the future generation. I want a black, I want some, uh, I want a litany of black men to step up at, to, to the leadership position mm -hmm. and talk to black men, especially the young ones. I can't about name one. what, I can't Well, name that's one. why, this is my plea. This yeah. is my call to action. You, you're right. Uh, I need <laughs> black men to talk to black men about how to lead, how to provide, and how to protect. Ebony, they're out here. They're already doing it. Where are you? <laughs> Where are you, Ebony? They're out here and they're already doing it. Where are you? Okay, so instead of them, <laughs> taking care of business they're out here they won't just to blame men like okay you know call to action no call to action is on you Ebony <laughs> call action is on you ladies you are the one who needs to change okay have some attitude adjustment stop blaming men for your or for the things that you uh, you've brought upon yourself this is your own doing so you can see that even Ebony she has decided to be rebellious Okay, because she doesn't want to change. She wants to be, be all. And then she decided out there to, uh, to just to be a single mom on purpose and intentionally. Wanting to bring a child into this world, depriving that baby girl of her father. Why? Because she just doesn't want to be a woman. She doesn't want to admit like, no, men and women are created different. Okay? Feminism doesn't pay. Feminism destroys women. How many women you're seeing out there, they're marrying each other, a woman and a woman, but then they're pregnant. 
No, man. A woman and a woman cannot be pregnant. So they still need men, but they are pretending like they don't need a man. But they do. And it's showing. It's showing left and right.